Hi, welcome to Cackle. We're New Zealand's experts in headsets, conference phones and anything that can improve office efficiency. If you're watching this video, you obviously want to know how to set up your Jabra 9120 wireless headset with remote answering using handset lifter. So what I'll go, I'll be doing that today with you. So we'll go through what we get out of the box for the wireless headset first. So what you'll have is you'll have the base unit, the base stand, the headset, there will be an ear hook in the box, we'll ignore that for now. Then you'll also have your setup guides and your power adapter. So then out of another box, you should have your, 91, your GN1000, which is your handset lifter. Okay, we start with the telephone, and every telephone tends to have a curly cord unless you're cordless and you can't set up a wireless headset with them. We'll undo the curly cord from the socket on the side of your telephone or sometimes it's located underneath. Pick up your base unit and have a look for the RJ port which actually has a little picture of, a, you won't be able to see it there, but it has a little picture of just the handset, so that part of the telephone, okay? It's not a picture of the telephone you're after. Okay, plug the curly cord into that socket, like so. So, if you're wondering which one it is, the Jabra label is on that side. It's the socket at the top that doesn't have the Jabra label. Okay. Then what we do is we take the cable that comes out of the base unit, which was already attached and where there's a picture of a telephone, and we plug that back into where we pulled that one out of, so into the handset socket. Okay. Then you have a look at your handset lifter. Now there's a couple of things I'll explain about the handset lifter first. This is the auxiliary cable and that eventually will plug into the base unit. It sits onto the phone with this flat part onto the telephone just under, comfortably under the handset lifter. You will attach it, I won't do it this time, you will attach it by peeling off those bits for the adhesive tape and then securing it on there. The plus and minus with the lever on top of the um, handset lifter is actually controls the height at which the handset will lift. So ideally you want it to lift so it just releases the button which terminates calls and, and gives you the dial tone. So put it to minus and we suggest about two to three clicks up will get you the basic height. The little dial or twist dial which you've got at the back of the handset lifter that controls the volume, the pickup volume of the telephone. So that means that's the volume of the phone that you can hear when it's ringing in the handset. Okay, turn it down to minus and just do a half turn. Okay, that tends to be sufficient for people. Um, there is a little button on the front as well, a rubber button. Now, when you press this rubber button, that red light on the headset lifter will light up, and that means you won't hear the telephone ring in your ear. Situations in the office that you might want to do that are people that are primarily sitting at the desk where they'll hear the telephone ring anyway. It can get annoying hearing the ringing within the headset. Okay, so that's a lifter. What I'd like to do now is we'll just I'll secure that there. Now I've cheated with a little bit of blue tape, so don't tell anyone. Now grab the auxiliary cable and plug that into the bottom of the base where it says AUX. So that will be looking like so. What we'd like to do then is grab your power cable and adapter. So I'm going to take the little female pin and plug it into where the power goes just at the top on the branded end of the, the unit. Now we'll take, to secure that all, we'll take the base stand. And this has a couple of uh, plastic cut holes in it and plastic protrusions. So we'll attach that. It'll take me a minute. Um, once you line it up and put it in, it's a simple anti-clockwise twist and clockwise to take it off. So just bear with me a moment while I while I do that. There we are. Got that on. Okay. So we sit that down. Pick up your headset, and if you look under your headset, you'll actually have a rectangular. Um, hole. That rectangular hole is where the battery charging terminal will go in. So that little, uh, sorry, on there, that is a terminal charging. So you want to just gently guide it down into that rectangle so it fits nice and snug. It does fit like a glove. Do this gently. If you actually return a unit and those are bent, that's because someone's been pushing too hard and that is not covered under warranty. Something to be aware of. They are fragile 
bits of a, well, they're not fragile, but they're, they're robust units, like a workhorse, but they're, they're not infallible. So now what we'll do with the headset in there, we will plug it in and turn it on. Once we turn the unit on, you'll actually get a green, you'll actually get a green light flashing or solid. Now this means I've already pre-charged this unit. If it's flashing, which you should be when it's new, that green LED should be flashing, then that means you need to charge the unit for an hour and a half till it's fully charged. Fully charged battery will give you 12 hours talk time, enough to work for the whole day, recharge it at night, off you go the next day. And we just need to pair the unit. So to pair the unit, we turn the power off at the source, so at the power pack. Turn it off for five seconds. Let's count one elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants. There we are. Now I should turn that back on. I should get a green light and then lots of other lights flashing up. Turn that round. And then they flash for a little while and then they stop. So this is, means the unit is paired. The next step is to see if you've got a dial tone. Now on the side of the unit you'll see what looks like an old style radio volume or cassette volume dial. So on this, if you turn it round you'll see some small letters from A to G. 90% of telephones systems use the A or G within New Zealand. These are telephone polarity channels. So you need to actually pop your headset on, the lifter goes up, and mine needs to go a little bit higher. So I will put that lever a little bit higher. I can use a middle button to actually control the height of, control the handset lifting up or down. So lift it goes up. Yes, my button's clear, so that's fine. To see if I get a dial tone, click the middle button on your headset. That means the handset goes up. Okay, if we, um, when we have a dial tone, it should be either channel A or G. So just if you do need to change it to get your dial tone, just take your headset away from your ear, change your channels until you have a dial tone. Okay, then once you do, um, you are ready to just dial out on your telephone, um, and that's fine. So I'll show you a couple of functions with the headset now, and that should wrap it up, so we won't be long. We've already covered that if I press that middle button on the headset that controls the remote answering or termination of a call. To change the receiver volume or the voice that you hear from the other person, it's either the plus or minus on your headset. Very straightforward. So receiver volume or the voice that you hear when someone's talking, plus or minus to turn that up or down. If you hear an echo, um, your own voice back at you after you're talking, you need to turn your transmit volume down or your microphone volume down. To do this, press the plus and minus buttons on your headset simultaneously, then you'll have three seconds to make an adjustment. So we recommend to do this, is make an internal call or call a friend who's willing to just bear with you. They'll need to be talking to give you feedback whether you've got the right volume or not. Now I'll show you again. So what you do is you have your headset on, Press the plus and minus button down together at the same time. Then you've got three seconds to make an adjustment. So I'll just turn that one up. And if you've got the echo, you need to turn it down. Don't do multiple um, presses, especially on the minus button, because that will just send your unit into mute. So I'll go through that now with you. If you press the minus button twice within one second, that will put your headset into the mute mode. To turn it off mute, you do the same thing. So press it twice. In one second, that's a minus button to turn the mute off. The, um, when you do have it in mute, on the base unit, you'll have a set of loops that will show up that will have a line through it. Um, I think that about covers it for your setup for the GN9120 wireless headset with a GM1000 lifter. All these products from Jabra have a two-year warranty. Um, just be careful of your prompts when you're placing it in. Now, if you do need other, any technical information from us, um, we have our setup guides and everything else on our website, which is www.cackle.co.nz. Very simple. Cackle is spelled C-A-C-K-L-E. Otherwise, you can call us for free in New Zealand, and that's 0508 222 That's 0508 222 Look, we're here, we're helpful, we'll take your calls, don't hesitate to give us a ring, even if you want to tell us something good or bad. Feedback's always welcome. Um, you can 
other videos you might find on, if they're not on the web, you might find them on YouTube or um, Google. So find us. Um, that's it from me. Enjoy your 9120 and your wireless access. And we'll catch you later. Bye for now.